I do is sort of our transition, but on that story, um, I, because there's no one here, I used the men's bathroom for the first time today, and the funny story is, found out that you can sell Viagra in the SU. Which is, um, you know, an interesting fact of the day, kids. Okay. <laughs> My family are blessed with broad shoulders, large chests, white hips. Born ready to take the world on our backs. Carry it forward no matter the way. Our spines would shift seismic down our nature. We carry our weight through life. Some more than most. My mother has carried the weight of our family across three counties. Used white hips to bear a baby she never expected at 16. Broad shoulders to heave her sisters through a short, sharp widowhood. Held three screaming daughters to her chest. Fed them dreams and frantic words of hush, hush. You'll be alright, little girls. Brought them close with firm tongue and a farmyard cat clarity. And even when daughter shifted to son, and all her hard work came undone at the seams of my chest, you see, my family had a legacy. Our breasts were going to kill us, just in different ways. Mine handed me the knife in some way. It will be now, it won't be soon, but stay with me long enough and you'll run rivers down your wrists to be rid of me, whereas hers were a time bomb, ticking in the nipple and ducts that fed me. So now, now is my battlefield and you can't fight me alone. It handed, it handed her a fingertip whip grenade, pulled the pin and a cocktail stick, and said, Here, force that trigger down and stop me if you can. She sat at my bedside for two days, waited for the days of raspberry flavored morphine and post mortem hangover to fade out before she started asking how it felt to go over. And I told her, It felt like falling asleep with six fully grown men watching you. And as much as that's a fantasy of mine, it's a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hers was a day of see. Two, day, two hours long, 24 hours in, let out one night and laid not quite corpse-like on our sofa for three. I never got to sit at her, so only do the washing up and wait for her to be discharged. Under anaesthetic, the skin goes grey. Turns the colour of foam that's been in the sink with the dishes, off bubbling to the surface and escaping, but she talked. Talked through a cacophony of profile. To the that I hadn't done the dishes right. Turned the bad pain was only bad when she thought about it. Told me the lady in the bed opposite her had the same procedure but didn't make it. Told me she'd done work, I'd done worse and lost six kilograms of weight at the same time. <laughs> Joked about how it was sentient. It was sat there getting jealous, so we just wanted to be. She joked about how she said she'd always hold out. I just don't think she expected the radioactivity directed at her chest to blister her skin the way the comic show Bruce Banner. She was burning up under her own 14 day rainstorm with gamma, but her temper stayed the same. She joked about how our scars were mirrors. Though hers was a shell scrape on the battlefield of her body, and mine was a starting line, setting me up in a race I'd never been prepared for. Told me about all the men in her life and how they were dicks. <laughs> and how that was the part that made her her and wanted to quit because they were done with it, and how she hoped that the death of my chest made me a better man than that she had before. That it had given me a starting block they'd never had. And she fought. Fought against the fingernail lodged in her chest, with broad shoulders, her own atlas carrying the weight of three kids and the cancer, and she lived. We both lived. Because my mom's a soldier. But when people tell me I'm brave, I ask them, how do you prepare a racetrack to a battlefield? Mm. <laughs> um, and, uh, tonight, tonight's been you know, relatively kind of depressing on the topics. As we know, it's like to keep things morbid as well. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to do a, a slightly less morbid poem that isn't my favourite, but I haven't done it in a while and I quite like ranting about my blood, so I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Harry Potter's up here, thank you, bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Blame the mudbloods. They are the downfall of the pure blood wizarding world. The mudbloods have destroyed our way of life. They have freed our house selves, burned our wizarding schools and damaged our world. Mudbloods let the prisoners out of Azkaban. <laughs> Is it any coincidence the first prisoner to escape was called Black? Hmm? Think not. Okay. <laughs> Mudbloods are corrupting our short shacks, polyjuicing our potions, and slithering into our secret chains. They are opening the Griffin doors to uncontrolled muggle immigration. They are taking our nifflers and do not even get me started on the Hungarian war tents. <laughs> British dragons for British jobs. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> We're going to throw 14 year olds with complex magical legacies and the history of abuse into a pit against a dragon. It's going to be British. <laughs> Mudbloods are destroying our Horcruxes and not even replacing them. They are messing up their own tables and succeeding in wizarding universities above our own students. 
Mudbloods loved Lily Potter and voted Remain. Mudbloods <laughs> emptied Gringotts of their funds even though the head goblin got a pay rise. Mudbloods owned iPhones but left their lives in the Forbidden Forest. Mudbloods unleashed a suitcase of magical creatures in New York and forgot to pick up the big orange one. Mudbloods pray in different ways, speak in different tongues and slang, nobody knows they are politically apathetic and unengaged in their communities, left out in the cold streets. They're abusing the wizarding benefit system and living in mansions made of dreams. Mudbloods killed Cedric Diggory, hurt <laughs> Dobby, and snapchatted it to their minds. Mudbloods cut <laughs> Harry Potter's name in the Goblet of Fire and made it two boys, one cup. <laughs> Mudbloods are coming to kill us all, so maybe we should start killing them back. We will carpet bomb the home counties and take London just to be sure, because if we can't pin them down, they'll escape. Mudbloods huffled your puff, and by that, I mean, they grew dubious plants in the Hogwarts greenhouse because selling gilly wheat puts butterbeer on the table. Mudbloods decided they take the last quality street out of the tin, so only the purple ones were left. Mudbloods cast Johnny Depp as Grindelwald and thought that was a fucking good idea. Mudbloods got sorted Ravenclaw and say Scotland's too cold for them, coming from lands of winter sun and sand. And Mudbloods are being incarcerated at twice the rate of purebloods, with Dementors kissing them three times as much. Mudbloods voted Voldemort for Minister of Magic as a protest vote. Mudbloods don't own a brew, but rely on the night service, so who's playing brew tax? If they're going to come into wizarding society, they should learn to fly. But they cause me to be late to my lecture, because more blood buzz means more traffic. Mudbloods are being murdered at home, so they ran to hear which child stretching country to country held evangelical against their own crosses victimised, and mudbloods aren't fucking real. But the same name, shame, shift of legacy, the push of blame burden from group to group is there, and instead of looking where we messed up, where we took too much and gave not enough for our friends, our worlds, our moments, we will shift it over. Pass it along. So it was anyone else who did this wrong, but when I speak to a girl from Syria on the streets, she sells me a big issue. She won't accept my loose change. Says it's not hers to take. Says she's sure I'll need it one day. And I'm sure the beast she's had to carry are far from fantastic. She's looked monstered in the eye and stood taller than anything. Been on enchanted boats overseas, crawling with the dead. Wish she could obliviate herself because we've started this yet. She's coming here, and well, why accept what we've done? And the mudbloods are to blame. It's magic how we blame the others. The bullshit's all the same. Thank you.